This video is just a short extract from the entire course. If you wish to see all of the videos from this series at higher quality and in far larger screen size, head over to ifskills.com. So we find ourselves again in the Photoshop Elements Editor, and we're still working with this old photo.tiff file. In the preceding lesson, the image was cropped, a adjustment layer was added to correct the tonal variance in the image, and it was also straightened at the same time it was cropped. Now, what we're going to do is remove the various damage that's been done to this picture. You'll notice that there are some scratches, there are some fold increases, and there's damage from what looks like tape being applied to the corners. That can all be fixed. The first thing we're going to do is, in keeping with our non-destructive approach to editing, most of the tools that we're going to use require that you have a specific layer selected. So in general, when you're using most of the tools that repair photos, they edit the layer you're working on. In this case, that would be the background layer. In some situations, there's no way to avoid this. But whenever possible, what I'd like to do, what I prefer to do, is work on a separate layer. Instead of permanently changing the pixels on that background layer, I prefer to work on a, another layer, a layer above it make my corrections to that so that they sit on top of the background layer and you can't see any damage. So the first thing I'm gonna do is select the background layer and from the bottom of the layers panel, click the create a new layer button. I'm gonna double click on the name layer one, which is the default name and rename it fixed image. Now you'll notice the layer is completely blank. I'm going to press the return key on my keyboard to finish editing the text so it leaves that text editing mode. The first tool we're going to use to begin the process of repairing this image is the spot healing brush. The spot healing brush shares its space with the healing brush tool. It's approximately halfway down on your tools panel. The spot healing brush and the healing brush are very similar to each other. The spot healing brush, as its name implies, is intended to remove spots like this. The healing brush is a more general repair tool. Now the first thing to notice is that in the options panel across the top, you have several different settings. The first allows you to choose a brush shape. I would like to go with a soft brush and I'll start with 27 pixels. You can also adjust the specific size of the brush. 27 is fine in this case, I'll leave it. But if you wanted to, you can actually go quite large. This brush is now so large, it's larger than the photograph. But I'm just gonna highlight it and type in 27 again. Now there are three types of ways the tool can work. Proximity match, create texture, and content aware. Content aware being the newest feature. Basically, what this tool does is you click on an area that you wanna remove, a spot you wanna remove. It analyzes the area around that spot and then fills in the area you clicked on, magically removing the spot. It really is magic. Proximity match and content aware tend to give you very, very similar effects. They use slightly different algorithms, and it's all math, by the way, so it's all about mathematical algorithms. I can't even pretend I understand the math behind this, but it works like a charm. So I'm going to use content aware. It seems to give a better effect in situations like this, but you can really try both. The key that I need to enable, the key property is sample all layers. When it's turned off, I can click on the spot all I want and nothing happens at all because it's only trying to sample or analyze my active layer, which is the fixed image layer. When I turn on sample all layers and click on the exact same spot, it's now able to analyze based on the background layer's content as well, like so. Now, normally you wanna make your brush a little larger than the spot you wanna remove. You can use a keyboard shortcut to increase the brush size. The right bracket key on the keyboard makes your brush larger. The left bracket key would make it smaller. Now, you have to be a little careful because if you make the brush too large, when you try to fix the image, not only does it take quite a long time, it can actually sample from a bad area again. I'm gonna undo that, Command kind of Z. I'm gonna shrink my brush down so it's just a little bit larger than what I wanna remove. 
I'm gonna place it right over the middle of what I wanna remove and click, and it's gone. The Spot Healing Brush removes specifically spots. You may wanna click more than once if it doesn't remove the spot the way you want to. This is because of the soft edge of the brush. Sometimes it doesn't apply as thickly as you want it to, but it's really, really quick and fun to use. So you've got a spot healing brush, which is based on analyzing the content around the area you wanna remove. So what does the healing brush do? The healing brush, and I can simply click and hold on the spot healing brush tool and choose healing brush from the list. The healing brush is a little bit different. It requires a target. I have to specify a target to sample from, and then I use the brush to click on the area I wanna heal. So in this case, I wanna remove this spot right above her shoulder. But do you notice anything wrong before I proceed? That's right. For the healing brush, I also have to enable the sample all layers switch. Now it's good to go. So I'm gonna move my tool back onto a dark area right near where I wanna remove it from. I'm gonna press the option key on my keyboard. That's an alt key for the PC users. I'm going to click on the area I wanna sample from, release my keyboard modifier. Once again, that was the option key for Mac users and the alt key for Windows PC users. I'm gonna place my healing brush right on top of the area I wanna remove. And this time you may notice there's actually a little overlay. Since I've set an area to sample from, the healing brush uses an overlay so that I can see what's going to be applied to this new area. And then I'm gonna click and release. And it applies the sampled pixels on top of whatever you click on. I'm gonna same thing down here on the bottom for this little black spot. I'm gonna resample from a new area around here. Option click or alt click. Hold my cursor over the little black spot I wanna remove and click and release. The healing brush is really helpful when you need to define a specific area to sample from. The spot healing brush's weakness is that because it tends to analyze the area around your brush, it can be very tricky if there are no clean areas around the brush. It kind of operates on the assumption that you have clean areas to start with. Now, you may be tempted to use the brush, well, like the name implies, a brush. You'll notice that I'm simply clicking and releasing, clicking and releasing. I'm using it like a blotter. Using it like a brush, let's say to remove this scratch over here to the right. I'm gonna option or alt click, choose an area to sample from. I'm gonna drag over the scratch. Sometimes that can have a very, very positive result. I'm gonna zoom this image to 100%. I did that by holding down Command, Option, and pressing zero. For our PC users, that would be Control, Alt, and then press zero. Sometimes the spot healing brush used on a scratch works really, really well. Other times, it works really poorly. It actually blurred the image here right along her arm. If you try to drag it across like this, you run into an issue in that the area it's sampling from changes. So it really does tend to work best as a blotter. You click and release, click and release, click and release. That one didn't work. It was too close to sampling her arm. Notice it's not always the best tool in all situations. That's why you have other tools to rely on. It's also why we have other lessons in this chapter. So to wrap up, the spot healing brush, great tool when you have to remove a spot or something surrounded by good areas of an image. The healing brush is a great tool when you wanna predefine the area to sample from. For example, if you don't have enough good area around the target you wanna remove. But neither of them is the only tool you have access to. There are times when neither of them is the best choice. The other tools you're going to be working with, the clone stamp tool, and even your selection tools, all have their place when it comes to fixing an image like this.